Hello everyone and welcome to the Coffee Corner on this Easter week and it is such a great beautiful week it's been. Uh, hopefully you've had some chocolate. I have my Cadbury egg here and oh gosh are these amazing. Uh, probably one of the things, the reason why I love Easter is Cadbury eggs. Uh, whoever invented them, I love you so much. Um, thank you that they're only out during Easter season. Um, but we're not here to talk about Cadbury eggs. We're here to talk about Divine Mercy. So you know the drill. Go grab your favorite cup of coffee and join me for this week's Coffee Corner. Divine Mercy. It is a, it's a beautiful feast day. and it's, it's happening on this coming Sunday for Divine Mercy. Uh, and there's a whole history. If you go to the, the Divine Mercy, I'll put a link below where you can have the history of the entire Divine Mercy outline through the 20th century. And it's kind of fascinating to kind of do a read through real quick of, you know, this is when Faustina was born. Uh, this is when Faustina had her first vision. Uh, this is uh, when the painting, uh, the famous painting, which here we go, the famous painting, um, uh, this has the wonderful line, Jesus, I trust in you. Um, it tells her when, when Christ had asked her to have that commissioned, um, or not commissioned, but to paint it. Or, uh, and, um, you know, the, his desires and everything so, uh, the, the, of, the, of the feast day to come, you know, come out from, from that. And so it's a beautiful outline completely all the way through going through the beatification and seeing how God's divine hand was through that entire process. Um, and so one of the things, too, is uh, his, her diary, which wasn't even published till the 80s, so the, uh, the diary of Faustina, St. Faustina, who uh, is the, without her we have no divine mercy, which is, um, no, without her, sorry, that's uh, incorrect. We always have divine mercy without her. <laughs> we still have divine mercy, but with her, through her, uh, through her, her will to act with God, uh, thank praise the Lord that she did. Uh, we have this beautiful devotion to Divine Mercy, and what I thought was really fascinating when I was when I was going through um, the history outline, just in general, is how quickly this devotion spread, uh, and that's something that I had never really thought about before. I mean, I knew it was quick, but I didn't realize how fast it was. You know, you're looking at you know World War II uh, is what when it's really starting to leave Poland for the first time. Uh, for, for a Marian priest who brings it uh, back to the United States. And from there, it just spreads like wild fly, uh, flowers. Uh, and, you know, one of the things, too, is, you know, you look at this Divine Mercy image and you think of, like, okay, whoa, like the heart, um, the heart of Christ with the two beautiful rays coming out. And one of the things that Faustina says in her diary, in, in, the, in the beautiful diary that she has, uh, is that she said she could see the rays of Christ, the love of his rays, spread throughout the entire world and so i can't imagine what that vision must have really been like in that moment uh, you think about having a vision and all of a sudden you can see his his love his mercy flowing through that of the whole entire globe and in, encompassing the whole globe uh, what a beautiful vision that truly is of that his love really truly embraces this uh, and, you know, the more I think about it, the more, you know, one of the things I was had opened up and told you guys about earlier in one of my previous um, episodes was that the trust of Jesus, that we have to have more trust in him. Something that I, I think that's that little phrase that's on the bottom that in that scroll. Here you have the, the scroll underneath. Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, oftentimes it's in Polish, this one. Uh, it's in English. Um, it, we really need to trust in him. Um, he's in charge. Uh, and I oftentimes think, was like, whoa, am I trusting in him? Or am I just wandering through a desert? Am I truly allowing him to trust in him? Uh, through this, uh, through this path that we're in, uh, this aspect of um, sometimes even where depression can kind of seek in on us, uh, where we've been in our homes, we've kind of uh, a couple of past couple of days it's been snowing and um, if you know me you know I don't particularly care for snow uh, and so all of that aspect kind of coming together so um, Cadbury eggs have become like my new BFF where I'm just eating them constantly um, thank God this is my last one praise the Lord uh, otherwise I'd be eating them left and right um, <laughs> so don't drop enough anymore that I don't need anymore um, thanks mom for the two that you sent me I went to Meyer and got some more um, but anyways uh, <laughs> Told you I was, somehow Cadbury eggs was brought back in. 
don't know how that happened, um, but it did. Uh, but Divine Mercy still, and I want to just read an excerpt from from the from the vision uh, that she she has um, uh, from from that, which is Christ's own words. Um, of course, it's been translated now into English for us. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. Um, distrust on the part of souls is tearing at my insides. The distrust of my chosen soul causes me even greater pain. Despite my inexhaustible love for them, they do not trust me. Even my death is not enough for them. Woe to the soul that abuses these gifts. Uh, you know, just one of those things too is uh, um, like he wants us to trust him. He desires us to trust him. Uh, you know, and how many times do I not trust in him uh, throughout everything? Um, one of the things too about my vocation story is uh, I'm a fighter. Um, not in a sense of uh, wanting to get into fistfights by any standpoint, but more so in the sense of I like to fight things. Um, I don't want to do anyone else's will. I want to do my own will at all times. Uh, that's like my natural inclination. When things get hard or things get difficult, I want to run away. Uh, that's just some of my natural inclinations. I mean, how I how I'm kind of wired in some regards. Like, all right, and, but I know that about myself. I know that you know when things get difficult, my natural inclination is to kind of go and then push aside everything that's difficult and then be like, okay, I don't want to touch that because that's difficult. Uh, I don't want to go there. That's painful. Uh, so I'll just build a wall uh, and not not touch that. And it's just kind of like, okay, instead of actually tearing down the walls that I put up against myself and allowing Christ to enter in and allow him to be the one that's guiding me and leading me. Uh, and so throughout my entire vocation story, I can see how many times it's as soon as something gets rough, a wall goes up. Uh, and how many times do we do that in our own lives, in our own daily lives? You know, throughout this entire time, we're going through this um, stay-at-home order, and we kind of put up walls, even though we're trying to tear down walls, but yet we put up walls, which kind of ends up becoming the contradiction, because now we, put, we have four walls around us that we can't actually leave the house, but yet we want to be able to spread the gospel of the message of joy. And so we use various means to be able to do that, a social media. Um, so to really kind of take that into like the next step farther is like, how do I enter into that, that aspect of trusting in him? And so that part of that is to cultivate that love of prayer, uh, which at times like this do become difficult. Um, they do become hard because it's easier to do this self-loathing than it is to actually go and pray. Um, the one thing that I love about the divine mercy prayer, the whole, the whole chapel of divine mercy is that it goes fairly quick. Um, and then at the end of it, you're just like, Oh, that's uh, very powerful. And all you need is really is a rosary. And then I'll put a link to, uh, down below, um, down below. If you don't have a rosary, God gave you 10 digits right here. Boom. Whoa. Um, so you have a decade right there on your, on your hand. Um, if you are crafty, I am not. Um, maybe you have string and extra beads. You could probably string some beads together and you could do uh, make a uh, Divine Mercy chaplet. And so a chaplet is just the 10 beads, the 10 decades with the Our Father bead and a Glory bead bead. Um, that's a chaplet. And so you can just make one of those. If you want to add the extra beads in too for the... Um, beginning of, in the end of prayers, but I'll put a link there too of, of how to pray, uh, 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 the Divine Mercy Chaplet, uh, which is really quite powerful to do. Um, you know, so be able to do that. This was a rosary that was, um, it's one of my, one of my favorite rosaries. Um, can you have favorites? But I do. I have like three favorite rosaries, um, actually four, four, four favorite rosaries. Uh, this one was my, uh, from, made from the flowers of my grandfather's funeral, um, which is quite beautiful. Um, but anyway, so, uh, so to be able to have that prayer and that prayer of that, of that trusting in God, uh, more so than anything is, you know, for the sake of a sorrow, passion, have mercy on the whole world, for the sake of a sorrow, passion, have mercy on the whole world, for the sake of a sorrow, passion, have mercy on the whole world. And after a while you start these repetitions kind of become this, okay, I want to offer this whole chaplet up for, um, those who are suffering from the coronavirus, um, 
for the sake of a sorrow fashion, have mercy on us on the whole world. Because uh, what we're doing now is uniting that pain that he's gone through already for us, and we're uniting all of that to him, uh, redemptive suffering, the pain that we're going through, that our, our own isolation, uh, you know, our family members who are in isolation, uh, you know, ourselves, which I just said that, ourselves. Uh, but then also for those who, who are actually suffering from sickness and illness, uh, whether it's coronavirus or whether it is um, any sickness or illness, um, whether it's depression, anxiety, um, we need to trust in him. Uh, and so, uh, my brothers and sisters, on this Divine Mercy Sunday, I just charge you uh, to go have fun. <laughs> enjoy enjoy uh, the day on Divine Mercy and remember to trust in in Jesus. Uh, and simply just maybe say 10 times, Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Uh, and be able to really recognize that it's him, Jesus, who trusts, that we need to trust in at all times. And recognize that um, my grandmother used to say, and I think I said it before, if God get, brings you to it, he'll get you through it. Uh, we just have to trust in him. And so my brothers and sisters, it's another coffee corner so have a good one uh and i know my love and my prayers for all of you and i'm gonna go enjoy this final cadbury egg <laughs>